fucking bike. This fucking bike, it's like the thorn of my existence. It's the bike that never gets ridden. It, nobody rides this bike. It just gets in my way every single day of my life. I rue the day I bought this bike. I rue the... What does rue mean? I rue the day. And it's the type of bike that'll last forever now. It'll never break. The chain will never fall off the sprocket. The brakes will never wear out. It'll never give me a good reason to throw it in the trash. There's my coffee. It's nature's pre-workout. Yep. I don't know about... I can't... I can't... St what is this new thing with people taking pre-workout? Oh, God. I got this guy at work. He's one of the managers at my job. He takes pre-workout at work. I can't even drum up the energy to do an impression. Like, like, hey, Jess, uh, I took two scoops today. He's like, yeah. He's like, I think later I'm going to go uh, uh, mountain biking. Uh, maybe, you know what? It's, it's not that far. I can go, uh, I can go up to Hunter Mountain. I could go uh, sort of snowboarding today if I wanted, really. I mean, we got snow. Uh, you know, it's not like we can And I'm just like... You know, you know something, when you go to a group of, of, to work with a large group of people, you are mentally assaulted by people. And that's, this is something that I want to bring up in court, okay? People have a lot of problems, you know? People have a lot, of, especially when you work at a shit job like I do, people have a lot of problems. People are really miserable with their lives. And it's like they bombard you with their problems, and I feel like taking every single one of them to court for mental abuse. I don't bother anybody. I always generally carry a smile, as phony as it might be. I might be seething inside. But on the outside, I'm generous enough to carry around a smile. And I don't break your balls with my problems. Oh my God. We got a lady in the back of the building. She's going through some problems in her life. I don't know. Watching some sick person. Might be a dad. And oh my God, it's like trying to get past the troll under the bridge every time you walk by this person. Where are you going with that? What are you doing with that? Where are you going to put that? It's like, oh my, somebody dropped dead. Either you or your father. I'm sorry because you're mentally abusing me. I don't, I don't want anybody to drop dead. But, you know, stop mentally abusing me. I can't take it. I really can't.
pre-workout. I didn't need any. We didn't need any pre-workout. You know what pre-workout was for me? You put on pumping iron. You watch Franco Colombo lift a, a, a goddamn car out of a parking spot for his father. Or for some old timers. Please, pre-workout. Pre-workout. And it's like, sure, buddy, I'll, I'll see you later when you crash. Or when you're driving home and you fall asleep and you literally crash into a pole. Or Lou Ferrigno. Lou Ferrigno was the real gem in Pumpin' Iron. <laughs> when he's working out in Brooklyn, and uh, he's working out with this guy, you could tell he's like the scummiest guy alive. Like he just did a, like a purse snatching before they, they got into the gym. And uh, I, I, what's his name, Hanny? I, that's what I, I think Lou was saying. You never know what the fuck Lou Ferrigno was saying. Anyway, uh... Lou Ferrigno's getting all, like, pumped up in the gym, and, and, uh, he says, um, yeah, so Hanny's like, come on, come on, Lou, come on, and then Lou drops the weight, and he's like, and it looks like a put on for the camera, but he's like, well, how many, how much more you want to put on, and he, and, and Lou's like, put more weight on the bar, I want to beat him. Come on, honey! One more, same weight, Hank. I'm not down to fight. How for more weight? Right, let's go. Let's I want to beat him. I need 10 pounds. 10 pounds on each side? Yeah. I'm ready, Hank. Come on, I want to see you 10. Hank! Hey. You're going to do it, too. Oh, come on, you're going to wipe him out. I don't know. That whole thing with the ear, it right, cracks me up. And then Arnold smoking a joint after winning the championship at the end with his shirt on that says Arnold is numero uno. Ah. Oh. <laughs> Pump an iron, baby. That's pre-workout for you. You want motivation at the gym? Do squats over lit road flares. That'll get you going. It's amazing that you go to the gym, you see women. You see women working out. <sighs> women have that killer instinct, you know? Just watch two women fight in UFC. Women have an edge, uh, this dirty edge about them that men just don't have. At the end of the day, guys are teddy bears. You know, we do what we got to do. And we, you know, we have our little front, our tough guy front. But it's deep down inside, every guy, every guy I ever met, the toughest guys I ever met were the biggest teddy bears. But women? Oh, my God. Thank God women don't have the strength that men have. And they don't. Because uh, it would be a different world. Because when women fight, they they forget the gladiators. They they should have had forget about men fighting in in gladiator times. They should have had women fight to the death. Woo! Oh, it would have got ugly, Jack. Did, did, we, especially over like a man or something like that. Oh my God! Women will take you down, and after you're dead, they'll gouge out your eyeballs. What were we talking about? All right. All right. What do we got here? Uh. 
Johnny. All right. All right. I don't know. Sip of coffee for something. I don't know what. For pumping iron. Remember when Lou Ferrigno was sitting by the trash can in Pretoria, South Africa, and he's, you know, he's eating oranges, and he just looks like a big lummox by the garbage can eating oranges. He's like completely socially inept. I don't know. That's what I remember. I don't know. All right, uh, we got a picture, uh, a package here from Johnny. Johnny from Kitchener, Ontario, Canadian friend. Been to Canada once. You know what blew me away? The candy bars. You expect that when you go into a convenience store, you expect to see certain staples, Snickers, Milky Way, Three Musketeer, Twizzlers, Mars Bars, Twix. I went in, when I went over to Canada, I just went over like to the uh, Canadian side of Niagara Falls. And uh, I remember going into a convenience store and uh, I, all the candy was like Canadian candy. It was shocking to me. That's it. All right. Got this package from Johnny. Oh, this was a trade, by the way. Oh. Oh, and I remember asking for a Budweiser and the waitress looking at me with a scowl and thinking to myself, you know what, these Canadians aren't so nice. That's what I said to my wife. I said, these Canadians, they're not very nice here. I mean, I guess that was a generalization. But sorry, sorry. Here in America, that's the king of beers, all right? Give me an old Latrobe. What do you guys got over there? Fucking, uh, what was the big thing? Molson Ice. Remember that? That was a big deal around here. Oh, my God. Now you got beers that are like 20% alcohol. You drink a half of one, you pass out and hit your head. The, back then, it was a big deal to get a Molson Ice. Ooh, it was what? 7.2% 7, 7 alcohol. Oh my God! Get a get a twelve pack of Molson Ice. That's what dirt bag. We were when we, even when we were kids, we were the biggest dirt bags alive. We couldn't just drink regular beer. It had to be Molson Ice. It had to be one of the most powerful beer that you could ever get. All right. Here we go. Got a note here. A note that I cut right through. Okay. Thanks for doing this trade with me. Bithead 1000, by the way. Thanks for doing this trade with me and adding three new games to my Nest collection. I hope these games can help you in trading or selling them to add to other games, to add other games to your collection, since I know you got a few of them in that last big lot that you bought. I really enjoy your videos and they help me have some quiet time with an ice cold Budweiser after my three-year-old and 17-month-old girls go to bed. God bless. God bless. I, t I tell you, I know some people, they got three or four kids. I just don't know how it's done. I have one and I'm ready to jump out a window. I can't imagine three or four kids. The idea of loading three kids into, into car seats into one vehicle is so daunting to me. That's like a full day of powerlifting. 
I would need pre-workout to go to the mall. Keep doing what you do, and when garage sale season starts here in Canada, I hope to be able to help you with more games. Sip a coffee to the greatest video game program in the history of human civilization. And you better believe that. With a 4K face! Johnny. I like that. That I like when a name is when the name is Johnny. You know, it's like when your name is John. It's like, well, who who are you? Like Jesus Christ? What? Well, what 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 was John? One of the apostles or something? I, I don't know. But when it's Johnny, it's like who who is this guy from uh, Dirty Dancing? Johnny is so much cooler than John. Is that on the birth certificate, Johnny? Hey, Johnny, you, it's like, hey, Johnny, give me a cigarette. You don't say, hey, John. Hey, John. Hey, John, can I have a cigarette? All right, all right. what are we doing here? I got here. I'm not looking. I, we did this this trade. We worked out a trade a while ago. I forget what the games are. So we'll rediscover them together, huh? What do you got here? Oh, it's Knock. Knock. What a wonderful game. For the Nintendo or for the uh, arcade? I mean, this game really shines on the arcade. It's very good for the Nintendo, by the way. But I just love when you get the rocket launcher and you're just blowing the limbs off of drug dealers. Frightening game. Frightening game. Uh, you're cruising around in a Porsche. You're running over drug dealers. They're exploding. Their arms and legs are flying off. Uh, how this ever got translated over it, over to the, the NES is beyond me. I mean, if you think about how how vanilla the the NES is, the idea that NARC came over and they got, it came over under the guise of this was like you know just say no. This is during the the, the midst of the drug uh, war. Oh, the drug war. Oh, I love it. I love it. I'm sorry. The drug war is the reason why we have dumb millennials now. It is. I'm sorry. You guys should be ashamed of yourselves. You know what it was? Ronald Reagan wanted to put so much money into fighting the war on drugs, which he did, that he had to cut spending to education. And now we're paying the price for it. Because we've got a bunch of dummies running around. Okay? Look around. All right? You see... Listen, I don't know if fucking young people are so fucking dumb. Somebody's got to say it. And there's nobody dumber than me. And I can figure that out. Wow, knock, yeah. Run around, picking up, stealing, stealing. Picking up drug dealers' cash. Taking their sacks of coke and bales of pot. Blowing up pot plants? <laughs> Going into factories and blowing up pot plants? What, are you kidding me? You're not going to have a better time with Narc. And then the final boss, one of the, the, the greatest, most hideous final boss battles ever. My Christ almighty. You play this game as a kid, you never want to sell any dope in your life. You're afraid somebody's going to hit you with a rocket launcher and blow your limbs off. <sighs> Acclaim, by the way. Wow, look at Acclaim. You know, Acclaim, you know, they get a bad rap. All right, buddies? Even though Rare, Rare made programmed Wizards and Warriors, right? But it's Acclaim on the label. So, I mean, you know, listen... A claim. Give a claim they do. What do you got here? Oh, yeah. 
Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. A top arcade hit. Bad dudes. Mm hmm. Uh, what is my memories of this side scrolling action platformer slash action platformer? This was, this is almost like, I would almost group this, this is almost like Shinobi, right? Was this two player? Where you could select from two guys? I don't know. Look at this guy. He's facing off with somebody. There's a guy with a chain. There's a guy with a with, with a with a throwing star. God, I, re I remember I traded my Swiss Army knife to Billy for. He gave me the shit knife. I, I told that story before about how my father got pissed, but he, I think he gave me a Chinese throwing star too. And boy, oh boy, hey, did it? Didn't everybody back in the '80s have a Chinese throwing star? We used to call them Chinese stars. Nobody called it a shuriken. It was a Chinese star. Hey, well, well, you got a Chinese star? What do you do? You run in the backyard. You start throwing it at the fence. Oh. <laughs> you whip it at the fence. It would stick in the fence. That's it. Instant ninja. Somebody tell me otherwise. I'll give him a Chinese star right in the forehead. Chinese star. Oh, man. All different designs, too. Some were like three, three, had three edges on them, like a triangle. Some of them were like a saw blade. Oh, some of them were like four-sided. Oh, you name it. Oh, please. Billy, Billy always had Chinese. St Billy was like Mad Max from Beyond Thunderdome when he started emptying out his jacket and just all, all these weapons started coming out. You know that old action movie cliche? That was Billy. If you ever said, Billy, empty out your jacket. Oh, forget about it. A dirty, he'd probably drop a dirty bomb. Kid was ready for war, man. Ready for war. Thank God he's in jail. Because, uh, you know, that's a guy you want on your side, trust me. God almighty, Georgie bought, <laughs> Georgie bought bad dudes, but uh, to be honest with you, we didn't really care for the game. I mean, it was such, this was an example of a game that was just really cool, and it was, it was in the arcades. Data East, it was in the arcades. It was really cool, the game. Bad dudes. I mean, the cover art, I mean, it was like ninjas and punching people out. I mean, the game was supposed to be cool, so we liked it. But to be honest with you, it wasn't a very good game. <clears throat> Excuse me. We didn't give it a lot of play time. Oh, here we go. Oh, my God. Take no prisoners. Oh, it was supposed to be the one. Number one, look at the goddamn guns on this green beret, anyhow. That's a guy that uh, you give him a handshake and he tells you, you've been pushing pencils all your life. All right, anyway. Uh, yeah, Operation Wolf. Everybody knows my, my deal with Operation Wolf. I waited for this game. I waited for it. I scrimped. I saved money. Uh, I played it in the arcade. I was absolutely dumbfounded by the... By the fact that you had this arcade with like an Uzi gun attached to it, and you just gun people down. It was like Vietnam. It was like you were in Viet in the Vietnam jungles. And I I just got it home, and this was just like a quarter munching piece of crap that I couldn't get off the second level. Uh, it was timed. Come on, stop putting timers on games. I hate being. I hate being timed when I'm playing a video game. I'm, you might as well just shut it off. Especially now, life is, you know, is such a rush. Everything's such a rush. Can you let me think? Anyhow.
know, look, I mean, God almighty. So depressing. So depressing. It's one of those games I had to fool myself into liking for months on end. But the one good thing about Operation Wolf was I play, when I did play it, I didn't tell anybody that it was bad. Oh, what are you kidding me? This was back when you could trade games. Yeah, I'd never tell anybody that your game was bad. Operation Wolf, it's the best. Why? You want to trade? <laughs> what do you got? Mega Man? I think I got Mega Man. I think I got Mega Man 2 for Operation Wolf. I think that's accurate. Good luck with that one, buddy. Take out a trade with somebody from school, not somebody that you know. There you go. How about that? Three Nintendo tapes. How about that? Remember all three of those. That's nice. A little bit of nostalgia right there. Little bit, a little bit of nostalgia goes a long way. Sip of coffee. Thanks, Johnny. Thanks, Johnny. Hey, Johnny. It's sinister. I believe people grow into their names. You know how they say people... They got pets. They, look like, they start to look like their dog or something like that. Or their dog looks like... I don't know. People grow into their names. Let me tell you something. A Dolores looks like a Dolores. You know what I mean? And a Roxanne, for some reason, a Roxanne always looks like she should be dancing on a pole. You notice that? It's true. Gilbert? You ever see a bodybuilder named Gilbert? No, it doesn't happen. Sip of coffee for that name. Who? I knew a Haitian guy who told me I was, he he was telling me about his kids, and he he said, "Here's a picture of my son Gilbert." I had I I think I laughed right in his face. I couldn't help it. <laughs> Only a guy from out of this country is going to name their kid Gilbert. That that's almost that's like here's my kid Adolf. Gilbert. Oh my god. You got those old school names too, like Gertrude. Whatever happened to those? I don't know. Here we go. Here's a package here. When I name my kid, you know, it sounds stupid, but when I name my kid, I wanted to name him something that would sound good when you yelled at him. Because to me, if I had one of these stupid names that these people give their kids now, like, could you imagine being in the shopping mall and yelling across, like, the, the store, Mason, Mason, get out from under those clothing racks! It's like, ha, what? Mason. So I was like, you know, I named my kid Max. You know, Max. Maximilian. Number one, it's Maximilian. So right there, I mean, that's like some fucking King Frederick or whatever named his kid. That's the origins of the name Maximilian. He named his kid... Maximilian is is his version of a Roman general Maximus and another f famous Roman fighter or something like that, Miliano, something like that. So he made Maximilian. What, are you kidding me? Talk about prestige in that name. And then, boom, you cut it down to Max. Hey, Max, get over here. Max, get down out of that tree. Max, get out of that boat! What the hell? 
are we talking about? All right, so here's a package. Uh, here's a package that I bought for myself, all right? I, I, I don't... Here we go. All right. It's a PS4 game. I don't know what I'm doing here. I don't, I don't know what I'm doing. It's Ghostblade. All right, ask me what I know about the game. I know nothing about it. I don't know what I'm doing here. All I know is the PS4 is cranking out one, like, uh, shooter after another. And for some reason, I want to support that. I just feel like I should be supporting it. I don't have a PS4. I, I don't see one in the near future, to be honest with you. But I'm buying these games because I want to support the cause. Because what happens? If we don't buy them, they don't make it over here. They get them in Japan. So you're welcome. You're welcome. We're going to get more shooters over here because of Bithead 1000. Anyway, it's Ghostblade. I mean, look at this thing. It's a vertically... This is what I know about it. It's a vertically scrolling shooter. And it, it, it looks gorgeous. That's all I know. Have I played it? No. Have I watched gameplay? Mm, no. I mean, I'll put some up, but... I don't, I try not to watch it. Uh, yeah, it's like one of these days, I'm going to play it. I don't know. I'm supporting the cause. All right? I really like the idea of that. You know? I know these guys are struggling to put this kind of stuff out, so I want there to be an audience for it. They're testing the waters, guys. That's what they're doing. They're testing the waters. Is, is people going to buy this thing? I'm going to buy it. I mean, you know, it's either that or buy something important that will actually benefit my life. All right. What are we going to do? I mean, on a side note, I got people asking me, hey, what are you playing? What do you play lately? That's what I get all the time. What do you play lately? Ah, to be honest with you, I got all these, I got all these wonderful, a wonderful uh, reproductions. I got, remember we got Forgotten Worlds, we got uh, Ease Book Four, da 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 da. What am I playing? Arkanoid. I can't explain it. That's what I'm playing, Arkanoid. I love it. So to me, for some reason, it's just this. I'm playing Wizards and Warriors too, but uh, but I love playing Arkanoid. I got that ported version of Arkanoid to the Turbo Graphics 16. It's basically the Nintendo port on on Turbo Graphics 16 that we got from uh, motherfucker. If I can't remember the name, it's on the tip of my tongue. God damn it! it starts with a G. Up in Canada. He sent us a wonderful re reproduction of, of, of Arkanoid po ported to the TurboGrafx-16. What a fantastic game. I'd love to speak more about uh, Arkanoid. I can't stop playing it. It has this addictive quality where I find myself playing it for hours on end. And I can't get up to the fourth level. Arkanoid's the real deal, man. That's a good, good game.
And I remember it in the arcade with the uh, with the weighted with the weighted uh, control wheel. Oh yeah, it had such a great feel to it. So responsive, but it works out well with the controller on the controller. It works out well. Anyhow, I can go on and on about Arkano. I just want to tell every you know who I think one person asked me when I'm when I what I'm playing. So here you go. Wizards and Warriors and Arkanoid, two genius games. Anyhow, let's get these games into the cabinet. Get out of here.